Well, with me in studio now is Mr. Matt Chipman. He's the editor-in-chief of the Green Baron Report. Uh, Matt, good to see you again. Glad to be here again, Don. Well, two weeks in a row. I'm, I'm very flattered. <laughs> <Thanks> <laughs> now, I was, uh, we just had an interview with R.J. Bomarito with Santa Fe uh, Gold Corporation. I understand that's a company you're also following as well. We've tracked the developments of Santa Fe, you know, SFEG, for, for some time now. What's been great to see is this company is actually one of the first companies uh, that we followed from beginning to end here, or not even to end, for ongoing, that is actually going into production. They are increasing production, they are a producing mine, and they've, they've actually commissioned the mine in record time. And so now the company is really in, in a cash cow position. So if you like the price of gold where it is, and we certainly do, the company certainly does, because it wasn't anywhere near this price mm -hmm. when they had discovered that their property held the potential for millions of ounces of gold, um, the numbers get kind of crazy. And, and the stock is, is really, if you look at the history of where it's been the last year, around 90 cents a share. It's, yeah. it's a bargain. Well, you know, it's interesting because uh, RJ uh, likes to say, you know, both on the program and uh, privately, that the company, although their name is Santa Fe Gold Corporation, they're, in, in many respects, they're a silver company with a gold lining. They've actually got a lot of activity in the silver market. Oh, sure. Whenever you find uh, uh, gold, you find silver, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, sure, and the price of silver has done, done pretty good too. You know, usually you have a, a, a large amount of silver to go with it, but of course you've got to produce, what is it, 20 times, 30 times right. as much silver to, sure. to get your same ounce of gold. But um, yeah, the, the numbers are going to start uh, really, it's going to be nice to see the revenues to bring earnings per share down to the mm -hmm. bottom line. Uh, the way uh, I've seen some internal forecasts, and we've done our own forecasts of this company, and the stock at 90 cents uh, to me looks like a great value because the earnings could call for a stock to be many, many times higher. Now, of course, you know, whenever we talk about the price of gold, uh, inexplicably we're talking about the, uh, the uh, strength of the U.S. dollar. And then, you know, the two work hand in hand. And, of course, a couple of weeks ago, uh, China uh, indicated they were going to change their policy on their currency and allow the yuan to appreciate against the dollar. Um, how do you see that playing out? I had my own opinions at the top of the program, but what do you think is going to happen there? Well, you know, I know a lot of people have urged that to happen. Um, you know, I, 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 we focus really on the U.S. stocks, so I, I probably don't have a strong opinion one way or another uh, how that works out. Um, I look at uh, how, whether China is going to continue to grow like it has. I know they're uh, having the same struggles everyone is having mm -hmm. in, in maintaining that growth. Uh, the thing is, though, they, they don't have the same issues that a lot of countries, say, in Europe or that we have with regards to pension funds, health care, right. well, sometimes they don't even offer it, you know, right. and so they don't have those, those huge issues. So if they remain a low-cost uh, producer, you know, China's going to and continue owning well, they're, they're handling it very, very intelligently. And as I said in the monologue at the top of the program, I mean, the Chinese consumer is not benefiting from, them, from this meteoric uh, Chinese uh, economic growth that we've seen the last 10 years. I mean, the, um, the consumer portion of the economy is only about 35 percent, which is dramatically lower than what it is here in the West. And uh, as you mentioned, they don't have those kinds of costs of health care and retirement. Uh, those are all borne by the Chinese citizen, citizen, citizenry themselves. I mean, they take care of that themselves. They're not relying on the government to supply that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I understand the next, you know, if it does get to that where there are a lot of uh, costs going toward that in the future, they're gonna, you're, you're going to beat to a new door. You know, I've yeah. heard Vietnam and some of the other countries mm -hmm. in, in Southeast Asia may become the next China or the next explosion in production. Well, people always ask me why I talk about the Chinese economy as much as I do, and it's because they're holding such an enormous amount of our debt. And uh, they really kind of almost kind of hold our economy in their hands right now. It, so uh, assuming that the dollar does appreciate, assuming that over the next several years we do start to whittle away at our debt, that's only going to help things domestically, especially with, with respect to the stock market. People will get much more confident. Yeah, I, I tend to think a lot of these things tend to balance itself out over time. You know, the economies, you know, uh, there, there are certain, you know, uh, things that come in play because every time you get a little inflation it takes away from other things that will help the economy. It's, it, it, there is a balancing act that sometimes we don't have to always control it. You know, the government mm -hmm. feels like it, it's got to always step in and, and sometimes really truly control it. But I think what, what we're going to see is, is rates are going to stay down. You know, with rates staying down 
and, and it, it will help the, ho the housing market. You know, I know we did just took away this tax credit in late April, right. but you know, if rates are, are, if you can go get a loan for the people that still can get a loan, sure. eventually when people get back on their feet, they're going to be able to borrow at a low rate. Well, yeah, it's not a Chinese proverb, but it does may, remain true that the only person who's more foolish than the person who thinks the good times are going to last forever is that person who thinks the bad times are going to last forever. Economies are cyclical. They go up and down. It's ebb and flow continuously. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, what, you know, of course we'd like to see, you know, the debt uh, in this country and in, in worldwide start to, uh, to, to, you know, get taken care of, get paid off. And, uh, you know, there are going to have to be austerity measures. We're going to see higher taxes. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that is at the, at, at, at the, you know, whether it hurts our growth, you know, in, in the economy going forward is remains to be seen. I just hope it, they, they don't try to get too much too soon. You know, it has to be done. And you know, slowly, you know. Well, that's that's the nice thing about uh, the American system is that you know in many countries where there's austerity measures and uh, economic unrest, you see civil unrest. Here, we just vote them out. <laughs> <laughs> For people who want more information about the Green Baron, uh, where can they get it? They can come to thegreenbaron.com. Uh, click any Join Now icon. Uh, we have a new pick coming up. Uh, you know, the week of uh, looks like the week of July 11th. We're going to have a new pick. And uh, like I, like I said in our last show, the average gain in our last four picks has been just under 48 percent, which is uh, you know, and we expect that with the next one. Once again, Matt Chipman, Editor-in-Chief of the Green Baron Report. Again, the uh, website is thegreenbaron.com. As always, thanks so much. Thanks for having me on, Don.